All right, engineers, in this video, we're going to talk about polycythemias, right? So there's two types of polycythemia that I want to talk about, mainly. Polycythemia vera, or primary polycythemia, is the first one we're going to talk about. And in order for us to understand that, that's going to be occurring usually within the bone marrow. So again, there's two types. I'll write it here. Two types. Polycythemia vera, or primary polycythemia. So first one is primary polycythemia or again, we can call it polycythemia vera. And the other one we're going to talk about over there is going to be secondary polycythemia. OK, and we'll, we'll discuss the differences between these two. And then we'll talk about a special thing called blood doping. All right, so first off, primary polycythemia. What is the issue with this? Primary means it's actually having a problem with red blood cell production, erythropoiesis. So it's occurring in the bone marrow. That's, the, that's usually the problem. What is usually the uh, cause of this? So if you remember, erythropoietin, which is made by the kidneys, by the proximal convoluted tubule, if you remember, erythropoietin will actually stimulate your myeloid stem cell and your proerythroblast and all those other cells to be able to undergo the erythropoietic process, to trigger it to go to make erythropoiesis. So again, what is this hormone called again? It's called EPO, right? Erythropoietin. So erythropoietin, whenever there is a disease in polycythemia, there's an issue with the receptor which EPO binds to. So this receptor, we're not going to go into detail on it, but this pathway is called the JAK, which stands for Johannes kinase, STAT pathway. And STAT stands for signal transcription of that signal transducer of activator of transcription. And basically what this does is it comes in here and signals the nucleus to start undergoing proliferation or activating genes to undergo transcription translation. What's the issue? The issue with po po primary polycythemia or polycythemia vera is there's some type of dysfunction within this JAK-STAT pathway. So if there's a dysfunction in this JAK-STAT pathway, the receptors change. And what happens is this actually occurs more frequently or more amplified. So there's a more amplified effect. And if there's a more amplified effect, what's the overall result going to be? An increase in erythropoiesis, more red blood cells. Because that's what polycythemia is. By definition, polycythemia means you're making a lot of red blood cells, an increase, an abnormal increase in the production of red blood cells, right? So again, what can be causing this primary polycythemia or polycythemia vera? It's some type of mutation or dysfunction or even we should maybe not even say dysfunction, we should say hyperfunctioning. Let's actually use a better word. Let's say hyperfunctioning. Hyperfunctioning of the JAK-STAT pathway. And whenever there's hyperfunctioning of the JAK-STAT pathway, it's going to uh, activate more transcription, more replication, and you're going to have more erythropoiesis, which is going to result in what's the overall result of increased erythropoiesis? Increased red blood cells, right? So you're going to make more red blood cells. And if you have more red blood cells, that initiates polycythemia. So that's, our, that's pretty much it for primary polycythemia. What would be the symptoms of some of these individuals? The so symptoms is if you have more red blood cells, what happens to the actual thickness in your blood? So think about it. If you have more red blood cells, so again, let's say you're having a lot of red blood cells spilling out of the bone marrow into these actual sinusoidal capillaries and into the bloodstream. So if you have more of them, you're going to have a larger number of red blood cells. If you have a larger number of red blood cell to water ratio, then the actual viscosity of the blood is going to increase. So what's the overall result of polycythemia? There's an increase in blood viscosity. So the overall result is going to be an increase in viscosity. So the blood will be thicker. Another thing is, if you think about it, if you have more red blood cells, because of this increased viscosity and friction and stuff like that, and just the number of red blood cells, there's an increased chance of blood clots. So the incidence of clotting for, um, formation occurs. So an increased incidence of thrombi or emboli. So what could result of this? If you form a thrombus within the uh, maybe the deep, the deep um, I'm sorry, the great saphenous vein or some other type of vein, like the popliteal vein, femoral vein, you can get a DVT, right? If 
That thrombi forms somewhere else. Uh, let's say it actually forms within the coronary artery, it can cause a myocardial infarction. If the emboli gets stuck in the pulmonary arteries, it can cause pulmonary embolism. If it gets stuck in the cerebrum, it can cause a stroke. So there's a lot of effects of this, right? One of the big things with polycythemia is an increase in viscosity and an increased chances of thrombi and an increased chances of bleeding. So they also might have increased bleeding. So they'll have a longer what's called prothrombin time. Okay, whenever you test their blood to see how long it takes for them to bleed, they might have a longer prothrombin time. So they have an increased bleeding, right? All right, so that's pretty much it for this, increased viscosity, increased incidence of thrombi or emboli, and they might have more frequent bleeding occurring. So that's polycythemia vera in a nutshell, right? All right, and obviously with this, you'd have to be able to provide some type of drug to be able to control the EPO hyperfunctioning, right? So that's pretty much it for that guy. All right, so now let's talk about blood doping. So you remember in the Olympics, there was individuals who were actually taking some of their blood out a couple days before they were doing some type of, you know, uh, race or bike riding, whatever it might be. And what was the overall result? They take that blood out, they would store that blood, and then a cup, maybe a day or that, the, the day before the event, they would inject the actual red blood cells back into their circulatory system. If they do that, what's the overall result? There's an increased number of red blood cells. And if there's an increased number of red blood cells, there's more oxygen carrying capacity. If there's more oxygen carrying capacity, you can give more oxygen to your muscles to be able to have more endurance. And so that was the overall goal. But what's the problem with that? With increased viscosity because it comes the increased chances of thrombi or emboli. So what could happen to some of these individuals if they weren't properly hydrated? They could develop some type of cerebral embolism and end up with a stroke. They could develop an embolism within the myocardium or thrombus of the myocardium and end up with an MI, so on and so forth, right? So blood doping, now it's, it's, no, it's now no longer ethical within the uh, Olympics now, but blood doping can cause a transient form of polycythemia. So what's the overall result of blood, do blood doping? It can cause a very transient form of polycythemia. Okay? Now, the last type of polycythemia. Who actually makes EPO? Who's the one responsible for making, making the EPO? If you remember, here's our kidney, right? And the kidney, remember you have the Bowman's capsule, proximal convoluted tubule, descending limb, ascending limb, distal convoluted tubule, and then it go into the collecting duct, right? Well, there's the, in the proximal convoluted tubule, there's cells here that are constantly secreting EPO, right? And we already went over the mechanism of that in the uh, erythropoiesis video, right? With the HIF and the enzymes that depend upon oxygen. What does EPO do? We already know that EPO causes increased production of red blood cells. That's what it's designed to do, working through that jack stat pathway. Well, secondary polycythemia is a problem with EPO production. Primary polycythemia or polycythemia vera is a problem with specifically the red blood cells being formed within the bone marrow. Secondary polycythemia is the problem with EPO production, okay? So what can cause an increased EPO production? Uh, well, obviously it's low amounts of oxygen, right? So someone who may be uh, training at high altitudes, so if they're in high altitudes, there's less availability of oxygen there. Um, some people who might have certain types of cardiovascular disease, so in car certain types of cardiovascular diseases, right? So CV diseases, it can actually decrease the oxygen carrying capacity, right? So in certain types of cardiovascular diseases, um, and in other cases, uh, we could even have this due to maybe even a renal cancer. So maybe there's some type of cancer within the actual kidney tubules. If there's a cancer within the kidneys, that could also cause maybe an increased production of EPO or erythropoietin. So just in general, the whole idea is EPO is usually triggered by, the overall result is hypoxia, right? or low oxygen carrying capacity. That's the overall result. This is the big one, but what could be some causes of that? Could be due to high altitude, could be due to cardiovascular diseases, or they might just make more EPO because of some type of cancer causing an enhanced production of EPO. So that's the overall concept there, right? Whenever there's large amounts of EPO, what does that do? Well, think about it. Come over here. Increased amounts of EPO is going to increase the jack stat pathway. If you increase the jack stat pathway, you're gonna increase erythropoiesis. If you increase erythropoiesis, you're gonna make more red blood cells. And this results in secondary polycythemia, which is again, an increased production of red blood cells due to enhanced EPO production. So let's get the difference here. 
Secondary polycythemia is due to increased EPO production. Okay, and again, that could be due to hypoxia, like at high altitudes, like cardiovascular diseases, like maybe slow blood loss, or maybe it could even be due to uh, them having some type of uh, adenoma or, or cancer of the actual kidneys, right? And then primary polycythemia is due to some issue with the bone marrow's production of red blood cells. So the red bone marrow, red blood cell production. So this is the issue for this one. So that's the difference between primary polycythemia or polycythemia vera and secondary polycythemia. And then remember, blood doping is just a transient form of polycythemia where it can cause a temporary rise within your red blood cells. But again, what is the overall problem with this? Increased viscosity amount. If you increase the viscosity, you increase the resistance. When it's another thing that can happen with increased viscosity, if you remember from cardiovascular videos on our topic of blood pressure, increasing viscosity causes an increase in peripheral resistance. And if you have an increase in resistance, what do you do to your blood pressure? Your blood pressure increases. Right? So if there's an increase in viscosity, there's an increase in resistance, and there'll be an increase in blood pressure, so they might even exhibit some type of hypertension, right? And again, this is the big one, increased incidence of thromboembolytic conditions, and then also increased chances of bleeding, right? So they'll have more bleeding that's occurring. And then again, they could have dizziness in certain types of uh, situations, headaches, all kinds of things, right? All right, so pretty much in a nutshell, what is polycythemia again? It's an increased production of red blood cells, which is either due to primary being bone marrow red blood cell production and abnormal production due to a dysfunctional, but let's actually be more specific, a hyperfunctioning of the JAK-STAT pathway, right? They would have an increased sensitivity of the receptors that when EPO binds, the effect is amplified. The intracellular message is amplified, and what's gonna happen? It's gonna trigger more erythropoiesis, which is gonna make more red blood cells. Whereas secondary polycythemia, it's not a problem with the receptor now, it's an increased production of EPO. And if there's an increased production of EPO, there's an increased jack stat pathway and increased erythropoietic process and increase in red blood cells, okay? So that pretty much, in a, in a nutshell, gives us everything we're gonna need to know about polycythemias.